Hi guys, Natalie here from Heart My Chihuahua. Now you all sent me your questions that you wanted answered by an expert. I had so many replies, that was fantastic. But I was only able to choose 10 questions to ask the expert. So it was really, really hard to choose 10 questions because I wanted to be able to answer all your questions for you. So then I decided it was only fair to ask the top 10 questions that were asked by you. All right, um, today here I have Dr. Ryder. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to do the interview with me. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, oh, uh, so Dr. Ryder, would you like to let the listeners know a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm from Michigan. Um, went to undergrad at Michigan State. Went to vet school at Ross. Um, finished up in Wisconsin. I've uh, been practicing for three years doing emergency medicine, critical care. Um, currently at uh, an emergency clinic in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Great. Free surf. Um, okay, so I'm excited to hear what you have to say um, and share with us. So we'll begin. Um, my first question is about subluxation of the patella. Can you explain to us what that is? Yeah, patella luxations are common in small toy breed dogs. Um, it's where the kneecap or the patella um, kind of slips out of the groove that it normally sits in. Um, it's something that has to do with the, uh, the way the, the femur or the thigh bone, it kind of curves in smaller breed dogs, so it makes it more apt to, to slipping out um, or luxating. Um, most dogs, it will pop in and out. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really cause any signs. Um, when it does cause signs, um, when it causes pain or lameness, um, those are the dogs where we need to either A, treat medically, um, anti-inflammatories, rest, um, and see if it resolves that way, or the ones that um, it's constantly happening every day where they have periodic lameness, then we go to surgery. And um, there's a few different procedures, but typically deep in the groove, um, and then you can um, tighten up the ligaments around the knee, and then you can also, um, there's another procedure where you can move the attachment of that patellar ligament or tendon down a little bit lower on the shin bone or the tibia. Um, and the three procedures together, one, two, or all three of them will usually keep that patella in place and, and resolve the lameness. Okay, oh, cool, great. Um, I did have one follower that told me that... Um, her vet told her that it was because her chihuahua jumped too much. What are your thoughts on that? Because you can't no, really stop a chihuahua like, from jumping. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can't stop a chihuahua from jumping. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, it's not. It's not really from over exercising. It's it's the way that they're. It's more genetic, so it's the way their conformation is in their in their leg. Cool. Uh, and probably about 70% of chihuahuas, you can get a luxation of that patella. Um, but most of them, like I said, it's subclinical. It doesn't cause any signs. It'll pop in and out, and it doesn't seem to bother them. It's the ones that were painful where we need to do something about it. Yeah, great. Okay, so um, my next question uh, is that some people have commented on chihuahuas who have seizures. Um, what causes a chihuahua to have a seizure? Lots of things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if it's... Uh, Younger than one, then typically we're looking at a hydrocephalus where they have um, or water on the brain, mm -hmm. uh, and that's due to um, decreased drainage of that CSF or cerebral spinal fluid out of the brain. Um, and the, the domed head chihuahuas that have a little soft spot on the top of the head, um, those are the ones that are more apt to get in that. Um, one to five year old chihuahuas, typically it's going to be um, epilepsy that's doing it, that's causing seizures. Um, liver shunts are also possible um, and then once you get over seven eight years old then you're thinking more along lines of brain tumors as the leading cause of, of seizures in dogs yeah. Yeah. so is there anything that you um, that we can do to prevent a seizure in a chihuahua like medication or yeah, yeah. The ones, um, if it's the hydrocephalus, then there's a surgery you can do to sh to um, move that fluid from around the brain to the abdomen. Pretty involved surgery, but um, the universities will do that. Um, if it's epilepsy, there's phenobarbital is your your main treatment. Um, if that's not working, then there's potassium bromide, zinesamide, uh, levetiracetam, or Keppra. Um, those are the the four main anti-seizure drugs yeah. um, in dogs, and that, those work well for the uh, 
the tumor dogs as well, the brain tumor dogs, but um, at some point the tumors can get big enough where the meds don't work. Mm-hmm. Uh, or if it's a liver shunt, then you go in surgically and um, tie off or put a little constrictor around that, that shunt um, for those guys. Okay. So if um, I have a chihuahua and it's having a seizure at the, like right now, what would I do? Like, Keep your hands out of his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of owners think they're going to swallow their tongue, but they go in and try to hold their tongue, and then they get chewed up pretty good. So don't don't mess around with their mouth. They're unconscious when they're having a seizure. They're not going to swallow their tongue. Um, just basically put them somewhere if they're on the couch. Try to move them to the floor where they're not going to hurt themselves, um, away from stairs. Um, turn off the lights. Keep it quiet. Um, quiet, dark area. Just let them have the seizure and, and start coming out of it, and then you can, you know, reassure them a little bit more but um yeah protect yourself first and then uh, and then get the dog where it's not going to hurt itself and and it usually lasts about 30 60 seconds of seizure so um once they start coming out of it you can work with them then cool. great this is great information thank you um so the next question is um involving exercising your chihuahua and since chihuahuas are small how much exercise do we need to give them um, walking home once or twice a day is ideal. Um, it's good for behavior training as well, learning to walk on a leash, sit and stay. Um, but they don't need to be, you know, run like a like a husky or a working dog would. But um, you know, a half hour walk once or twice a day it would be ideal with the Chihuahua. Great. Um, okay, so a majority of uh, my followers had asked this question: Does neutering your Chihuahua affect his or her behavior? Um, getting the testosterone out will help a little bit with some of the marking, a little bit of the aggression, um, kind of the, the humping behavior, help a little bit with that. Um, but it's, we do it more medically to help prevent, um, some of the hormone induced tumors, um, the little perianal adenomas or little anal tumors in male dogs or, um, uterine mammary tumors in female dogs ovarian tumors too. Chihuahuas are temperamental. It's hard to get all the behavior yeah, <laughs> issues yeah. out of Because a lot of people um, have said that their chihuahua um, got angrier after it was neutered. Um, yeah, I think that probably has more to do with the age, okay. more so the procedure, um, you know, starting to mature a little bit more, usually when you're neutering them around 6 to 12 months, and that's when they get their uh, set in their ways behavior-wise. Cool. So um, another question related to the behavior of a chihuahua. Um, people have told me that the chihuahua um, get, like they quite often get nervous and agitated around other dogs. Um, what can we help do to help their nose and get them to feel more comfortable around larger or other dogs? Uh, chihuahuas are pretty uh, one owner dogs, um, and the, the best thing is when they're when they're young when they're. Um, you know, anywhere from two months to six months old is getting them out and going to puppy classes, getting around other dogs, going to see other people, you know, stop by the vet clinic and just let them see people in there, go to pet stores, um, socialize them when they're young like that, and that'll help prevent them from being a uh, a one-person dog where they kind of tremble and growl at everything else that's, that's around them. Yeah. Um, the other thing that helps is um, you know, chihuahuas typically live, you know, held up up in the air and you know they're constantly being carried around and they get that um they get kind of the the mindset that they're you know instead of being a a foot off the ground they feel like they're five feet off the ground and that's how big they feel all the time so it kind of helps to i mean i know people like to carry their dog around but it does help to let them walk around on the ground like a like a dog um, at times (laughs) 